Hello everybody, how's it going my fellow humans and non-humans out there? <laughs> um, today's a special day as I'm gonna be doing the Four Souls promo card tier list mabob. So like, I wanna go over some ground rules. S is like the best, D is below average, C is average, A is good, and B is a Above average but not super duper good and I'm gonna write these though I mean this is all my opinion but I gotta understand where people are where I'm coming from so this is the where you're just some guy or gal I guess who wants to buy a four souls card you know and you're like hmm well I got the base game I got the expansion but I'm missing these promos which should be my priority and which one look the most fun to have in my collection <laughs> Oh my goodness, I can't believe I have them all. Like, I think about this, you know, like, I collected them all, you know, like, is this really my big accomplishment in life to say that I got all the Four Souls promos? But <laughs> other than that, you know, let's not worry about this, you know, about my life, you know, we're, we're worried about the Four Souls. So in here we got from Paxplow, and it ends all the way to the... The new Ultra Pride Boss promo card. So yeah, we, there's two new ones that haven't been officially released yet, but we could somewhat judge them based on how they supposed to function. Okay, so let me just, you know, pop in, and the first one we got is the Pax Blow. Now the Pax Blow, <laughs> funny story, is actually my first Four Souls card because the pack, the, <laughs> the Kickstarter was taking a while to give me, not Kickstarter, um, Stu71 took a while to deliver my package of Four Souls, but I managed to snag this boy up. So, um, where should we put him? Well, um, I'll have to put him... Oh gosh, I can't believe I'm saying this. This is like the first promo card, which so, there's a debate this even classifies as a promo card. Because of that, I have to put it below average. Now, let me list two reasons why. One, it's not even made... At, with a similar card stock at all, it's, it's just different entirely. Two, it's more of a novelty item than a than a natural promo card. Three, it <laughs> it's just the same bloat but has a website slapped onto it, which I think you can see those little red letters down below. Four, the cute bloat artwork was later reused. The Pax Bloat's cute art was later used for this. Oh, the, I I don't know if I specified, but this is called the Pax Bloat by the community. Well. That's what we like to refer to it as. And um, to get it, well, it was during the promotion at PAX East or West. I don't remember which one it was exactly, but basically it was to help advertise that Four Souls existed, you know, because this was during the Kickstarter. It was, it's a first, and yeah. Oh, wait, and the last reason why it's not that great of a promo card is because unless you're using colored sleeves, the back side of it is like the old version of the back side <laughs> of the monster card. Um, I, I really hope, like, I'll send Red Star an image so you could put it on here so you, you know what I'm talking about. To compare, you know, which one's the old one, which is the new one. The old one had no border, new one has a bum border. So, like, if you have clear sleeves or you play with naked ooh, 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 don't, don't, don't play naked cards, man. Don't, don't do that. <laughs> ooh, that, that, that's, that gave me night, that gave me nightmares. So, if you did that, um, it's gonna stick out because it's a different material and just different, it has a different back. So that's why it's below average. Now, after these came out, then came Four Souls, you know, the actual game. And then afterwards, we got the Target version. Now, the Target version had three promo cards right here. Deadeye, Marked, and Epic Fetus. And there are three treasure cards, and honestly, <laughs> I think they're like the most well-made promo cards. Because I, I'm going I'm to talk about the consistency of Four Souls. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, because it, it gets wild, I'm telling you. And, um, oh gosh, let me make sure I didn't, like, mess up the recording. Okay, uh, yeah, it's fine. Okay. <laughs> we're, we're, this is, by the way, this is not scripted, so, like, I hope you understand. You know, I'm trying to make a, you know, fun video idea that I thought about. And, um, so yeah, these, by quality standards, they're great. They f mostly fit right in, um, 
I don't remember if they use the original card stock or not, because I think at this point, Four Souls has five different card stocks, so they're slightly different, slightly bigger, and this and that. So not all cards are created equally, but most of these f f blend in the most. You know, they're not foil cards, so, like, they, they, they won't bend or feel weird, you know. And overall, for the first expansion, they're okay. They're not super rare or anything, so, I mean, it's rare if you're international, a person that doesn't have a target, which, fun fact, getting these cards was <laughs> was an interesting story. So, like, I remember I was playing with my friends, Super Smash Bros., and I was all chill and stuff, and then I get a tweet, and I, and I read the tweet, right? Edmund says that the target edition of Four Souls is out now, and I was like, what? Okay, that's nice. And it includes three promo cards, I was like, what? I went like full woke mode, and then you know, me and my friend they went to Target, and then I remember because like I had to talk to the employees, you know, because like they weren't too sure if the item was technically released yet, so they had to you know check in the back, you know, to see if um if they were le legally allowed to sell it, which they were, and then I got my ha a copy of this, and overall um there was some benefit to it was that I got extra coins, so now. Uh, now I have like a full sack of 300 pennies which I like to use and so there wasn't too much of a meh to buying the, the game a second time but oh gosh this was a sign to come wasn't it <laughs> buying the game multiple times but okay so yeah the, these three you know <sighs> balance wise they're fine uh, they're, they're, I mean you could argue that some are very broken but other than that, it's just... I mean, Dead Eye is really strong, but... I feel like, thematically, it should make it where if you miss... It lowers your 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 attack to base attack, like, like the video game, but... Other than that, that's my only complaint about these three cards. Oh yeah, also, I gotta tell you a story about the Pax Bloat. So, I found it on eBay, and I was like, oh, I gotta tell everybody, but I was like, oh wait... I probably shouldn't, because then they'll take the card, and then... And then I, then I got the card, and then I told people about it. On, on that was on eBay. <laughs> okay, that, that, those are the, those are the stories right there. Here comes the green champion blow. Now, oh gosh, this is gonna be controversial, but I have to put it a tier. Okay, just joking now. It, it, it's it's a foil card. Um, it's a bit. I would say it's a bit. It should be a bit rarer than the Target version. I feel like the Target promos are very common that most people have, unless you're international. If you're international, then yikes. That's actually pretty. These are pretty hard cards to come by. The, the Champion Bloat um, is foil, I believe. Yes, it's foil. Okay, I was like, I was like about to turn my head around and look at my collection, but yes, it's foil. And um. It's based on, you know, because if you didn't know, in the Bind of Isaac, there's monsters called champions, which are just re slightly recolors and basically have stronger stats and stuff. And this is supposed to be a slightly different bloat. Eh, fine. I I'm fine with them. It's pretty cool. Um, but I'm overall, it was a sign that we're going to get more bloats. I should have seen coming, but. Uh. Now, next on the list. Mm. 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 Eden Girl. <laughs> because um technically Eden is not doesn't have either other gender because he switches back and they switch back and forth you know because like every time he plays Eden you know you're playing as a different character over and over again you know Isaac's being reborn and stuff but but Edmund you know decided to release a new promo card which was Eden you know but with a new hairstyle which I honestly think it's pretty cool because you know if you have all if you have all the Eden cards you just increase the chances of becoming Eden when you shuffle. And you can also do three-player Eden, which I really hope is the fourth Eden out there. Because the first Eden is, um, you know, base Eden. But I hope we get another Eden so then we can play an official format of four Edens. And, yeah, I think that will be really cool. And, oh no. Oh no. Oh no, 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 no. Oh wait, before I talk about the ominous entity known as the Gish cards. Uh, um, these two cards, the, the way to get them was a promotional store... At Studio 71, you ordered something from the Isaac merch at a certain price, and you would get these cards. And I, I ordered stuff that I gave away and stuff, but nah, it's fine. I, I believe I was a bit mad because I believe I ordered some dice because I really wanted the unholy rollers. That's what they're called. And then like afterwards, that's when they started doing the promotions. So I was like, bruh, now I have to buy something I don't want. <laughs> uh, oh gosh. 
So then, um, we got the Gish cards. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Oh gosh. Okay. The Gish cards have a lot of history in the Four Souls community. If, if, if you talk to people, you're gonna get mixed, actually m mostly negative bag, and I'm like the rarest a, a person that actually is like the only defender of the cards, actually. <laughs> oh gosh. But even the card design alone, that's not even the worst part. The story of these cards. Okay. So, long ago, there was a company known as Limited Run Games. <laughs> Oh gosh, I'm making some get some ancient story or something. Well, basically they released limited run games. Basically, basically um, well, sorry for repeating the same word. Basically, you know, sorry, sorry. But what they do is they make a limited release of uh, um items to sell. Like, let me think of an example. Like, there's there's a limited run of Scott Pilgrim vs. the World, the game, a physical copy edition, basically, and they're running that. Well, Edman decided to team up with Limited Run Games to make a Gish box, which is to celebrate Gish's 15th anniversary. And, um, well, included in there was two Gish cards. Now, funny story is, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm somewhat of a Gish fan. Not, not super big, you know, like, it's not my favorite platformer, but it, it's pretty nice. You know, I like the music and the atmosphere and stuff, and early Edman um, art. So, I, you know... I see this, I'm like, uh, okay, I'm like, I'm like, like, just like, normal default mode. But then I'm told that <laughs> there's two Four Souls cards, like, oh! So I quickly, you know, grab those cards, you know, snag them up, you know, what? I, I didn't order, but I didn't snag them up, but I, or, I pre-ordered the Gish stuff. You know, oh man. So, these Gish cards were judged heavily, mostly the monster card, if anything more. And... <laughs> Oh my god! Oh my goodness. So, um, so yeah, basically there was already a negative kind of um thing, and then I remember, um, um, some people on a live stream for Edmund, you know, I was asking about, um, about Gish being unbalanced, and we heard the famous quote from Edmund: "How is this unbalanced?" Which I know I could trigger some people right there if I say that quote and bring it up again. <laughs> Um, personally, okay, controversial statement, because, like, I know why people don't, I have an idea to why people don't like it, but, basically, he has 6 HP, oh, no, we're not judging him yet, we're not judging him yet, we're not put him on the pedestal, whoops. So, he has 6 HP, okay, we're gonna put him here, just so you have a better, no, okay, um, okay, for, for now, we're gonna put him on the C tier, for now, but we're out, these are not the official positions where I'm gonna put them. Basically... He has 6 HP, you gotta hit a 3 or higher to hit him, and then he does 1 damage if you if you miss. And he get, he's a boss, so he gives you a soul. So basically, you have to attack him, if able, you know, to, so like, I don't know, unless you're dead or something, then you guess you can't attack him. And then as well as that, um, whenever you kill, you know, the thing, you gotta, you gotta make a player lose a turn. And I've encountered Gish in my play sessions, and I think he's... Fine, I, I'm scared. Actually, I'm legit scared. Of the Four Souls community is gonna pop in, bust open the door, and just like, halt, dweller. You know, you're gonna lose your Four Souls status or what or whatnot. But I, I'm, just, oh gosh, I could like, like literally, like, we could make an SI video you know, about the Yish cards. But okay, that's not even the story. The story's not even over. So when limited run games, you know, finish printing these things, there was an infamous quote when someone asked, "Are the cardstock going to be, you know, from the same factory as the other four sales cards and whatnot?" Um, one guy from limited run games that worked there was like, "Oh, don't worry, you know, we're using our own separate print and stuff like that, but we're pretty sure it's going to fit in nicely." Well, um, okay, I'm going to I'm going to send Red Star some images of display on <laughs> on camera, oh, not on camera, but on the video. But basically. Yikes! Those don't fit in. So like, like you, you notice that they're not they're they're not even shaped right. They're not standard card size. They're slightly bigger and cut weird. And as well as that, some of the art is a bit stretched and squished in a way that's not great. And you can notice that you know how much extra bleed zone cut that was. Like, yikes! Right there. Like, oof, oof. Like, like. Okay, though, I wouldn't be mad if this was a normal card, but the fact that it's a premium product that you're kind of paying for, 
kind of hurts, man. Like, I know technically you're not supposed to play promo cards, but the fact that they advertise it as it would fit in, it hurts. I mean, granted, they gave us a second wave of Gish cards, which luckily for me was fine, but for some individuals, they got like a weird cut at edge, my Bob. So like the Gish card has like a point to them. And like, I was gonna rate them like, you know, A, you know, but stuff, but because of the stories of how, um, the, 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 the cuts go, and the fact that now there's technically two sets of these, and they kind of are the rarest cards, there's a bunch of factors into this, but I can't keep them on A tier just because the fact of the stories that go in between. So if you're a collector, I, I guess you gotta watch out if you're gonna get the bad cut Gish cards, and also fun fact, because Edmund never released, um, you know, a good image of the Gish cards himself. Not sure why, but, um, <laughs> this is a Russian bootleg, um, version, you know, that the, you know, the Russians out there, the Forceless community decided to decrypt and decipher and reconstruct the artwork. So th this is not the official artwork. The teeth are a bit better than the official one than, than this Russian bootleg, so I have to mention that right there. Also, Little Gish is actually pretty nice uh, compared to... Uh, he has, like, less drama out of, out of, the, out of uh, the Gish, you know, ex expansion. I guess you could call that the Gish expansion. They have a little G for their little thing. And also, the target cards have little circles. The two bloats have a star, and... Yeah. So... Oh, gosh. After the Gish part, we got the Eden Boy. Instant S tier. Great. If you literally... You want to collect these Eden cards, I feel like. If you're a Force Souls collector that wants to, you know, get his stuff, you know, I would definitely want to get, um, the Eden cards. And as well as that, okay, basically, Boy Eden and Cute Bloat, which is now the name, you know, this was kind of the Pax Bloat's name, but to differentiate between them, we call them this one Pax Bloat and this one Cute Bloat. Cute Bloat, honestly, just because I really like the art a lot, and I don't know... Yeah, but um, anyways, these two, you get them from pre-ordering, not, not do pre-ordering, but doing like a little sign-up, you know, with your email and stuff to say, oh yeah, I'm definitely gonna, you know, get Tapeworm, which was a, a, a card game, which I, you know, there's like a Tapeworm saga in this channel, and like, basically, you get these two cards, and honestly, ordering Tapeworm, that these were the two priorities in my mind right there, but... Cute Bloat, I really like how they reused this art, the Pax Bloat, because not many people own Pax Bloat, and as well as that, it's really nice to see it in an official image. Foil's fine, it's it's fine. And, um, yeah, there's, 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 there's that Bloat. I'll put a B2, he's not really, I mean, I guess these are kind of sought after because, like, there were, there's no promotions for these right there. Actually, because of that, yeah, I'm going to put them A tier because... Currently, there's no, like, promotion to get them. Because, like, there's promotions to get Green Bloat and, and Girl Eden. And they, they come back once in a while. You know, so they're not super duper rare, but they're kind of rare. Also, Gish cards are supposed to be rare, I think. But then they got a reprint. So, like, maybe there's, like, 2,000 of them, roughly. But, eh. Okay, so then we got Tapeworm the character. Instant A tier. Like, I... Like, it's a bit weird about the story about egg counters and stuff that I would like to go into detail, but the point is, if you're a Four Souls collector and you want to add a new character, which actually, this is the first, you know, character, you know, this is his start, this is their starting item right here, the Protoglid, oh gosh, I don't know how to pronounce that, but basically the equivalent of a worm egg, but it's not an egg, but worms are complicated. So, basically... If you get this, somehow manage to get a hold yourself of the pink box of... The shiny pink box of Tapeworm. You're gonna get your hands on a brand new character and a set of other cards. Granted, I'm not gonna rank all the cards equally because, um... Well... Some are just better than others. <laughs> okay. So then we, we got, um... Black Pultigid and, um... I'm gonna have to actually look up how, what, what, the, what he did exactly. Uh, excuse me. Um, luckily... I got a fr uh, acquaintance. I was about to say friend, but I don't know if, he, if they classify me as a friend. But they they made a four souls card um, document and stuff, and it's pretty actually handy, honestly. So I gotta go to, to treasure deck and s should scroll all the way to the bottom. Okay, there we go. There's the protoglids. The black one is start every turn. You may put an encounter a monster or five land each time. Cause like honestly, the only one I've ever encountered is the white Proltoglid, which 
I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> oh my goodness, it's time. Okay, so I get that. What the? Okay, basically the cool part about the egg um, tapeworm cards is that they have egg counters in it, and basically egg counters they eat at the end of a turn or whatever. Uh, they m would activate where m Bob they interact with each other. So theoretically, if you had more than one tapeworm item in a game, which is honestly a pretty hard chance to come by, but pff, maybe you got lucky, they, they would interact with each other, which is really cool. But, um... Oh, oh man. I, am I too generous? I think I might be too generous. Okay, I'm gonna be... Mm. Then, um... White Protoglid. I know a lot of people don't like him, because basically, I find it really cool, because you got to attack other players, and maybe I'm just, uh... <laughs> A, a savage or something that just likes a t that has a chance to opportunity to attack people, and I don't know. I see this as a cool political card because basically it'd be like, yo man, I got power. If you dare threaten me, I will definitely use my white poltergeist. Okay, can we point out the fact that <laughs> I know this is like old news by now if you've been watching my channel videos, but these cards were supposed to be named Petunia, Boris, Minkus, and Greg, but then I was like. <laughs> But then Edmund just, I guess, didn't do that at all. But it's fine. But, um, I'm gonna have to put the red Poltergeist a bit up just because it's the first treasure card Worm Boy did. And I don't think you know, but I'm, actually, I'm a big fan of Worm Boy. And then we got the Rainbow tr um, Worm Trinket, which honestly is a very great trinket on itself. Just in case, I'll read the dialogue for you to describe it. But I feel like it's, it's literally a very strong loot card. At the, at the start of your turn, roll. 1 to 3, nothing. 4 to 6, this becomes of a copy of a non-internal item to the end of turn. Yeah, that's just really good right there. I, I really like that a lot. And here comes the tapeworm monster and the... The not-safe-for-work monster. <laughs> okay, they're not bosses. So some people confuse them as bosses for some weird reason. Meh. And actual... Oh gosh, the only reason why he's not a D tier is this because it's the first not safe for work card. You know, and probably the only one. So there's some funny novelty about that. But, okay, the not safe for work monster is just, I'm gonna say it, it's useless. <laughs> so the, the gimmick is it's supposed to be like a ticking time bomb. You know, you gotta, you know, gotta worry about, oh man, if we don't if it make it a certain meter, it's gonna explode and, you know, we're all doomed. But then, like, you can just cover over another monster, and then not worry about it at all. Like literally, if they just made it where you can, this monster cannot be covered, if that's it, that would have made it be save it a bit. And also, it gives you one cent. Wait, does it? Let, let me make sure because I can't really see. I'm gonna, I gotta pull up this card. I believe it gives you one cent. I believe. <laughs> I don't want to make assumptions. Okay. Yes, one cent. <laughs> So you're, you're, you're worried about all this for one cent. Not worth it. Not worth it. Okay, so this would be where the Four Souls um, promo card list would end. Mm, but... Now this is a big butt moment right here. But... <laughs> um, we got two new promo cards that have been teased. Apparently, um, I mean, they're these were just announced. So, like, the wording and stuff like that is probably going to change. But... We got a gist of what they're supposed to be, you know. So we're not really caring about stats and stuff like that too well. Especially for this one, because this one's probably going to be the one that might be worked the most. Well, quote unquote quotation, most. So we got corrupt data. A lot of funny shenanigans happen with this. It's a it's a, an event card, so you're in the monster deck, you reveal this card. People move items to the left or right or something like that. But the more interesting part is that you actually change your character card. The fact that this is the first card that actually does that is pretty interesting, you know. So both your character and internal card gets swapped out, you know. It's one of those cool cards that, like, change the rules just for a brief mirror period of time. I really like those type of cards and games. So, yeah, this one's actually going to have to put this A tier, you know. I really... Because, like, these two, you can actually get them right now for a limited time. you got to sign up, which... I guess I'll put the link to the website. I, oh, guys, it's free advertisement for Four Souls. Who knew? <laughs> Hashtag not sponsored. And then, as well as that, you're going to get Ultra Pride. Now, Ultra Pride, um, let me get, let me give him a good look. Because, like, we can't really judge him, per se, because 
he's not done, basically. Because, like, there's probably going to be some changes, but the gist of it is he has 4-4-1. Four, four, and one. And basically, he every time he gets a counter, it increases. And, and once he has four counters, you have to attack him. You know? So basically, you don't want him to get too strong. And basically, the reward is you get one loot for each counter on it. So basically, if he has no counters, you kill him right away. Yeah, he, he, he does. Actually, oh gosh. Okay, I, now I see what the problem is. I, I was actually curious to why everyone had a problem with it. But yeah, if you kill him early, he just gives you a soul, which... To be, I mean, to be fair, he's kind of easy to beat, but, hmm, I, I'm gonna have to put him in B tier, cause for now, because like he's really easy to beat. I like the fact that you have to attack him once, like he gets too many counters. I like that, and I gotta give bonus props to um for the pose admin is, you know, cause based on the Meat Boy pose, um, I, I gotta get, get, um, show Red Star to put it on screen. So for now, this is my definitive four souls tier list it's probably not going to change too much i could be critical you know and go each of them based on their stats and whatnot but as i said i'm thinking in the mindset of your collector as well as that you want to shake up your experience and which ones you sought out after first and even though i did split the tapeworms into bits that's I'm theoretically if for some weird reason some guy was selling the tapeworm cards individually and you were missing the Pacific one, and which ones were the top priority? <laughs> priority. And also, this is really cool that you know we got a new artist right here, Hamberry. That's pretty cool. Oh, where, where did I put? Oh, there we go. So yeah, that, that's been my list right there. I hope everyone's having a groovy day. And I realize I need to move this a bit up. Okay. Uh, is that better? Okay, that's good. So yeah, that's the list right there. <laughs> um, hope everyone have yourself a groovy day. I guess I'll put this in the description, the, the tier list. And, I get, and also I'll put the, the link to get the Ultra Pride and Corrupted Data cards, you know. So basically it's, whoa, advertisement what and whatnot. <laughs> Anyways, take care. Have yourself a groovy day. Bye bye. <laughs> oh gosh, I just remembered something. Uh, also, my eyes looked weird. Sorry about that. But um, where would I put the foil pack? Okay, okay, we're not worried about the foil pack. Anyways, bye bye.